25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 1 with my favorite, The Princess Switch. Stacy is a baker in Chicago. How do we know? Because her clothes tell us. She decides to get back at her ex and do a baking competition in Belgravia where everyone is dressed like this. This creepy old man is throughout the entire movie, but they never quite explain why. The hair department clearly had a vendetta against its actors because look at this haircut. The hair's not even near the ear. This is where Stacy meets Margaret and Vanessa Hudgens solidifies her spot as this generation's Eddie Murphy. This little girl figures out the plot within the first 10 minutes and it takes everyone else the entirety of the movie. Surprise, surprise, the girls fall in love with each other's man, even with that haircut. They gave this actor barely any lines throughout the entire movie, but oof, is he good to look at. The movie also becomes a Law & Order episode at one point and someone tries to sabotage her during the baking competition. Like, where's Benson and Stabler when you need them? But they were still able to make the six-tier cake without a mixer. Everyone finds out about their plot and is still okay with it. And this old guy is still there. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas, Day 2, The Princess Switch switched again. Margaret's father died and now she has to become queen, which she doesn't want to do. Haircut is back and he spends the entirety of the movie just trying to get laid, which he does not. We also find out that Netflix pulled a Halloween town and switched the actresses of the daughter as if we wouldn't notice. Don't worry, the castles are still filled with the tackiest holiday decorations. We're also introduced to a third Vanessa Hudgens in a Hocus Pocus reject wig. The movie starts to become the plot of Taken, but Liam Neeson is nowhere to be found. Vanessa also needs to get a restraining order against this old man. There's an airport chase scene like in every rom-com, but it ends with a queen of a country getting married at gate 56 in an airport next to an Annie Anne's, where there happened to be a priest. And the movie ends with Margaret having her coronation in what looks like the Christmas Isle of a Home Depot. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 3, The Princess Switch 3, Romancing the Star. Stacy and Margaret decide to throw an international Christmas festival? Someone steals a star and they decide to hire convicted felon Mary Kate Olsen, uh, Fiona, to help them. Haircut is definitely still there. Fiona hires her former friend slash guy she loves still, and this is where the story jumps ship. This Christmas movie all of a sudden becomes Mission Impossible without Tom Cruise. You guessed it, they also switch places in this movie, again, for no real reason. Creepy Old Man reappears and looks even creepier. Everyone was basically a felon and a spy in this movie, and it all turned out to be good in the end. Honestly, this trilogy is probably up there with Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, and even The Godfather. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 4, Single All the Gay, I mean way. The movie starts with Michael Yuri's character not realizing that his boyfriend is secretly straight, with that hair. He decides to bring his incredibly hot friend home to a very white suburban town, which seems like a scene out of Get Out. We find out that the son's mom is Kathy and Jimmy, aunt is Jennifer Coolidge, and dad was in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Obviously, he was gonna be gay. Like every gay rom-com, they seem to only be able to cast Luke McFarlane as the love interest. We also get some pretty incredible scenes of Jennifer Coolidge putting on a play in town. There's even a synchronized dance number to Britney Spears in the middle of it, and even with this cast, seems too gay. Even though Peter ignored Nick basically the entire movie, they still end up together and in love. Cause, sure. The movie ends with Nick giving Peter's nephew a book that he hand wrote in a notebook and expected the nephew to give back to him, so it's not really a gift. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas, Day 5, Falling for Christmas, starring Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay plays a hotel heiress with a gay fiancé, and she falls off a mountain and gets amnesia, but is found by a hot, towny lodge owner. The cop tells her that no one in this small town knows who she is, and that she has no fingerprints, which means she's probably never worked before in a day in her life. So what does she do? Goes and works for the lodge owner to see if that jogs her memory, because that makes sense. She adopts the name Sarah from a stuffed animal, so I guess just call me Paddington from now on. There's also a Brokeback Mountain side storyline with her gay fiancé and a rugged mountain man. She decides to keep working at the lodge and eventually falls in love with the lodge owner and his family. Her dad and fiancé find her, though, and that just miraculously jogs her memory as to who she is and what her life was. She ultimately decides to go back to this life with the lodge owner and remain poor, which I'm sure she's regretting with inflation nowadays, but they fall in love and have a happy Christmas. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 6, A Christmas Prince Amber, a journalist from a real place like New York City, decides to go to a fake place, Aldovia, to cover a story for work. They clearly slapped this airport sign on a cheesecake factory. To gain access to the palace, Amber decides to be a fake American tutor for the daughter who already speaks fluent English. 
Amber finds out that the prince plays the piano and realizes he must not be a bad guy after all and falls in love with him. We also find out that the prince is adopted, so he can't actually become king after all. Everyone finds out the truth about Amber, but the rich royal daughter doesn't care and gives her a bracelet from Pandora. The cousin tries to steal the throne, so Amber uses an ornament to overthrow a monarchy to make sure that Richard still can be king. Richard ends up proposing in the end to a girl who lied about who she was for the entire week they knew each other. So I guess there's hope for the rest of us. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 8, A Christmas Prince, The Royal Baby. Our favorite scammer Amber is back and she secured the bag. At this point forward, the plot of a Christmas movie gets really weird. They have to sign a war peace treaty with a neighboring country and it gets stolen. We also enter the world of Game of Thrones and find out that there is a curse on the family and the baby because nothing says Christmas quite like cursing children. While everyone's trying to find the treaty, Amber complicates things by going into labor, but the doctor crashes her car on the way there. Because, of course, you want a doctor to deliver your baby who can't even deliver herself to the palace. And in the climactic scene of the movie, or I should say anticlimactic, the person who stole it turns out to be a side character who had two lines the whole movie, and this couple gets engaged who we don't even care about. And, of course, Amber has the baby on Christmas, just like Jesus Christ. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 7, A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding. Our favorite scammer is back and we find out that her company went under, so the future queen is now a con artist and unemployed. Amber spends the entirety of the movie upset that she can't plan the royal wedding how she wants it. Richard spends the entirety of the movie overwhelmed by kingly duties and the finances, which is very clear by the mismatched string lights at the royal palace. Workers in Aldovia go on strike from low wages, and Amber decides to be a scab and cross the picket line and still hold the play at the palace. Amber decides to investigate the missing finances and goes in disguise with these sunglasses, but then immediately takes them off once she sits down at the table. They found the bad guy, and Amber was able to throw the wedding her way after all. And by the look of these cake toppers, the workers of Aldovia clearly have zero respect for their new king and queen. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 9, Best Christmas Ever, which after watching feels like it was written during the writer's strike. The main plot of the movie is Heather Graham's character trying to prove Brandy's character is lying about how perfect her life is, which feels racist. There's a lot of sexual tension, sexual innuendos, and swingers vibes between the four main characters. This incredibly creepy stuffed animal was throughout the whole movie and they all kept talking to it and I felt like all of a sudden I was watching Chucky. There are way too many subplots to this movie, and one of them is the kids trying to figure out if Santa is real. Yes, he's drinking a Red Bull. Then I got whiplash from this plot twist where we find out Brandy's son is actually dead and she's just been lying to everybody. In a Christmas movie. And then the movie ends with Heather Graham hanging from a hot air balloon pretending to be Santa but not changing her voice or how she looks. But Brandy sings twice in the movie, so that alone is worth it. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 10, A Castle for Christmas. Brooke Shields' character is a famous author who goes on the Drew Barrymore show and ends up acting crazier than Drew, which who knew that was possible. She decides to escape to Scotland, where her family is originally from, and ends up just buying the Downton Abbey castle on a whim. After trying not to, she ended up failing miserably and falling in love with the Duke whose castle it originally was. They end up fighting and she decides to go back home, but not before her new friends gift her with quite possibly the ugliest sweater I've ever seen in my life. My favorite part of the movie is he's reading her book and has a video montage playing of the four days they've known each other, as if it's a montage of their entire life. They end up back together and in love after only four days and decide to decorate the castle like a Diker Heights home in Brooklyn. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 11, Operation Christmas Drop. If you ever watched Top Gun and thought, this would be so much better if everyone was obsessed with Christmas, then this is the movie for you. Erica is an assistant in D.C. sent to this Air Force base to find a reason to shut it down. And my favorite two moments of this movie is she meets her guide on the beach, not at the airport. And she says, I'm from D.C. And he says, Washington? As if there's another D.C. The other best moment is Andrew ends up showing Erica the islands and their people, and she feels so bad she gifts these girls things from her purse, like a used hairbrush. This girl's face says it all. 
The base didn't shut down, the drop continued, and after only knowing each other for five days, they spent Christmas with Andrew's family together. The cool part is this is based on something the Air Force actually does every year in Micronesia. Who knew? 25 days of Netflix Christmas Day 12, the night before Christmas. We are in the Vanessa Hudgens cinematic universe now, and where do I begin? This old raggedy witch with the best blowout I've ever seen sends a knight to the future. For no reason. Vanessa Hudgens' character commits attempted vehicular manslaughter and then gaslights the police into thinking the knight just hit his head on its own. And just like any gay man, Vanessa Hudgens' character invites this stranger to stay with her because he's hot. Side note, I need this blouse immediately. They fall in love over the course of the movie, but ladies, it's 2023. Let's have higher standards. This man's homeless, jobless, and crazy. He ultimately decides to stay in the future with Vanessa, but there was no sequel to this movie, presumably because he died from not being vaccinated to modern day diseases. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas, Day 13, Holiday in the Wild. I feel like I was duped by Netflix because I think this was filmed as a regular movie and then they decided to release it at Christmas and went back and just sprinkled in a couple of Christmas trees. They don't even mention Christmas in a Christmas movie for the first hour. I'm just going to call her Charlotte. She's left by her husband and she goes on a safari slash vacation in Africa. And then we watch a movie set in Africa with two white people falling in love. She decided to extend her trip by three months because she fell in love with the elephants and just wanted to help them. So clearly she had nothing going on at home. She also ends up falling in love with Rob Lowe, who's stationed at the elephant rescue as well, which I kind of don't blame her there. Then they both just stay at the elephant rescue forever. Honestly, just watch Sex in the City. It's the same actress and probably more Christmassy than this movie was. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 14, Family Switch. This movie is basically just Freaky Friday, but with the entire family. And unlike other Netflix Christmas movies where they hit you over the head with Christmas, this one, you barely even know it's a Christmas movie. They brought back Renesmee from the Twilight movies to play the baby who switched places with the dog. And at one point, we're supposed to believe that this is a high school soccer game. What was actually a pretty cute movie all the way through was ruined by the very end, where they all switch places back on Christmas morning, and then they said, global warming who? It started snowing in LA. Yale emailed people that they weren't accepted to school on Christmas morning, and the U.S. women's soccer team made a home visit on Christmas morning to recruit the daughter. What? 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 15, The Christmas Chronicles. This was one of the most abrasive Christmas movies I've ever seen. It starts with a dad giving his son a knife for Christmas that says, A Pierce sees it through. Sees what through? Murder? The kids have to help Santa find his hat, reindeer, and presents, which he lost because he can't fly or do his job anymore. And this is where the movie becomes Grand Theft Auto. There's carjacking, evading arrest, a bad guy tries to burn the little girl alive, and then Santa ends up in jail and performs this jailhouse rock song with prostitutes. The most baffling part was at the very end, we spent an hour and a half trying to find this man's hat so he could fly, only for him to give the hat away at the end and say, I don't need the hat, I'm Santa. What? 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 16, The Christmas Chronicles Part 2. We find out the mom is dating Tyrese Gibson, which, like, good for her. But the daughter doesn't like it and just runs away, which seems overly dramatic. The kids end up in the North Pole where we're introduced to Goldie Hawn as Mrs. Claus. We find out that this guy is actually an elf who turned human because he was a bad elf, and for revenge he went back to steal the Star of Bethlehem, that Santa basically stole to begin with. They have to get the star back and cure the elf, so Santa and Kate go to get the star, and Mrs. Claus, who's always wanted a child, sends this little boy out on his own to scale a mountain. They get the star back, and this guy turns back into an elf, which will haunt my dreams. And then at the end of this crime-ridden Time Warp Christmas movie, they all join hands and sing to the moon, Oh Christmas Tree, like it's the national anthem. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 17, I Believe in Santa. 
Lisa meets Tom, a mid-40s single lawyer who is obsessed with Christmas and actually believes in Santa. To quote Whoopi Goldberg, Lisa, you in danger, girl. This grown man wears these pajamas and has a very weird obsession with Lisa's daughter. Let's talk about unhinged and creepy. He spends the entirety of the movie trying to convince Lisa that Santa is real and Christmas is this magical time of the year and decorates one of the ugliest Christmas trees I've ever seen in my life. Also, his incredibly hot best friend is very clearly in love with him but won't admit it. He ends up proposing to her in the end and she says yes because she must be desperate. And to end the movie, she writes an article about Christmas where, and I quote, she says, Santa transcends religion. 25 Days of Netflix Christmas Day 18, Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. Dolly Parton plays a homeless angel, and not one person in the town offered her any money. Christine Baranski owns the entire town and is selling a town to a mall developer. A mall developer. The town gets together to try to figure out what to do, and they contemplate murder, and then they sing a song just called Try, but they don't say try what? Try murder? Try drugs? What are we trying? Christine Baranski's character befriends a eight-year-old bartender who ends up getting in a car accident and spurs her character to become more sympathetic. In the end, we also find out Christine Baranski's character is the biological mother of the priest, and she no longer wants to sell the town, but after seeing everyone in that town, I think she still should.